Welcome everyone to Hindsight 2020, the virtual Allen Institute Developmental Recording Symposium. My name is Kathy Richmond, and I'm the director of the Paul G. Allen Frontiers Group, a division of the Allen Institute. We're delighted to have you with us today uh, here in the virtual Pacific Northwest. And before I turn it over to the co-chairs to speak about the event program, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Allen Institute and specifically about the Paul G. Allen Frontiers Group. Now, as many of you know, the Allen Institute was launched in uh, 2003 by our visionary founder, Paul G. Allen, and it was built on the core principles of big science, team science, and open science. Our institutes take on large foundational questions in bioscience and tackle them with multidisciplinary teams sharing the data and resources generated openly with the wider community. Now, we began as the Allen Institute for Brain Science, uh, known worldwide for our public resources including gene expression maps of mouse and human brains. We became the Allen Institute in 2014 with the launch of the Allen Institute for Cell Science, a new division focused on understanding the dynamic structure and function of human cells. Now, our most recent division is the Allen Institute of Immunology, and that was launched in December of 2018. These three divisions all operate in our Seattle headquarters, surrounded by the vibrant and right now quiet uh, community in South Lake Union. Now, in addition to these three divisions, the Paul G. Allen Frontiers Group, our, our division, extends our founders' commitment to tackling the toughest questions in bioscience beyond the institute walls. Um, we direct funding to investigators and centers across the country and internationally. So I'm going to play a brief video to help describe what the Frontiers Group is, uh, what we do, and what our impact aims to be. You know, one of the easiest things that people can say uh, to rebut something is, it's never been done, it can't be done until it's done. So how do you get people to believe in something that, yeah, it's never been done? But imagine, we've never been to the moon, right? That's one small step. Antibiotics is flaming through away his Petri dish. Where would we be with disease? So it's really important, I think, to believe because that's what advances the human condition. It's individuals who've had the courage to say, we need to do this. I don't know what I'll find, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because that's how we advance. The Paul J. Allen Frontiers Group seeks pioneers, seeks explorers, seeks people who are willing to make big advances, take risks, ask questions, be tenacious, and have curiosity to change the face of biology. The Frontiers Group is a division of the Allen Institute. Unlike our other colleagues, we look externally, we look outside of the Institute to see where are the breakthroughs, where is the science that really needs that catalytic funding to push through. We have two primary mechanisms of support. One is the Allen Distinguished Investigator, and that's for an investigator or a team for over three years of funding at $1.5 million. Another mechanism is the Allen Discovery Center. These are larger teams and longer term investments of up to eight years and $20 million. Both investments are meant to hit high-risk, high-reward questions and really to move the field in directions that will have a lasting and sustainable impact. There are very few places that are willing to really take this kind of risk, that are willing to say, we don't know exactly where this is going, but we believe in you. I can't think of a better investment in terms of payoffs. And history has shown that these investments pay off. Most scientists are used to the idea and used to the concept that to make advances, one has to take risk. The real challenge is supporting those types of experiments, and most agencies are very conservative. The Frontiers Group is unique in the sense that they allow you to do experiments which at the outset don't have a defined end, and it's possible that they don't all work out. This ability to do these types of experiments is a real strength of the Frontiers Group, and it enables the type of thinking and the type of experiments that has the potential at the outset to possibly change the way we think about a problem and perhaps even lead to treatments for diseases further down the line. You have to be comfortable sort of with that unknown and with the fact that you might fail. It's not like a traditional funding mechanism where you, you can define in five years exactly what the outcome is. Honestly, if you can define in five years what the outcome is, maybe it's not that interesting or it doesn't push us in the same way. For better or worse right now, science, um, it's very easy to get siloed. 
And this is why we hold multiple meetings a year, really trying to bring our researchers together to get new knowledge, new insights, and really cross-pollinate those ideas. People from different disciplines, they look at things in quite different ways, often in very different ways. And so getting a different perspective can often nudge you in a direction that you hadn't previously thought of. And in the best cases, can even suggest a new experiment. The best science, or the real breakthroughs, they always occur at the edges between fields. And we really need men and women who can see the problem at the level of the atom, the cell, the tissue, the clinic, and bring that together to solve big problems. I would say the goal of our group is to make a difference at the end of the day to find those ideas, to find those researchers that really have the possibility to move the field. Um, they're out there, but right now the funding is such that it's challenging to find those high-risk, high-reward funders who will support that kind of exploratory work. And that's what we want to do. We want to make that difference and make an impact. Paul Allen's vision and also the Paul G. Allen Frontiers Group um, has made it all possible. You know, you can want to uh, reach the frontiers, but unless you have individuals who are willing to bet on that, take risks on individuals and those ideas as well, it doesn't happen. So this is a partnership and we go there together and it's amazing to be part of such a visionary group. I hope that video gives you a, I hope that video gives you a good overview of the Frontiers Group and you're welcome to explore our website at allenfrontiersgroup.org to learn more. Today we're actually celebrating 10 years since our first Allen Distinguished Investigator awards were given. But now it's my pleasure to introduce our meeting organizers, uh, Jay Shindre of the University of Washington and Michael Elowitz of Caltech. Both have a long history with the Paul J. Allen Frontiers Group having received their Allen Distinguished Investigator awards in 2014. Now they lead the Allen Discovery Center at UW Medicine and they continue to drive cell lineage tracing and developmental recording advances with their breakthrough research. It was a pleasure to work with them to bring together this event and I'm really looking forward to the program and the fantastic lineup of speakers today and the sessions to come. So without further ado, here's Michael Olowitz to say a few words to kick off the program. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Um, I'm just like thrilled to be here um, and I just wanna welcome everybody to this virtual meeting. Um, I think we're all here because we recognize that development is probably one of the most amazing, captivating and astonishing processes in biology. And then when you really ask how does development work, it's really about the behaviors and histories of individual cells that are gonna proliferate, differentiate and go through these uh, incredible dynamic programs over time. And so, um, you know, for a long time we've, we've all recognized that you know, if we wanna understand development, we're gonna to have to understand the behaviors and histories of individual cells. And a few years ago, I think there was an amazing confluence where lots of groups, including ours and many others, uh, were excited by one simple, elegant and powerful idea. And that is that instead of trying to just pry information about out of cells, out of that history, that we could instead engineer the cells to help us out by recording information, um, recording their own lineage and molecular histories. And um, there's now been just an incredible explosion and that's really reflected in this meeting and in the series of seminars that I'm gonna tell you about in just a second. Okay. So um, I first got, um, uh, or one is part of the origin of this meeting is that um, we established a center a few years ago to help catalyze the development of this field. The center is seven labs uh, distributed across Caltech, the University of Washington and the Biocentrum. And um, with the generous and really catalytic support of the Allen Institute, um, we uh, created something called the Allen Discovery Center for Cell Lineage Tracing. Um, this is uh, led by Jay Shendere, um, Alex Shear, Cole Trapnell, Marshall Horwitz, Long Kai, Carlos Lois, and myself. And um, as I said, the, the goal of the center is really to help develop technology and also just kind of generally catalyze the field and apply it to a lot of different kinds of contexts. Now, another thing that the, the center has been doing is trying to support a dream challenge, which was a crowdsourced uh, uh, challenge to try to develop techniques for computational lineage reconstruction. And we're gonna hear more about that in a little bit from uh, Pablo Meyer Rojas, who led that effort. So um, as we had the center, we were thinking a lot about how to uh, connect with, with the whole field. 
And so last year we decided to organize this meeting, Hindsight 2020, which uh, was going to be in March in Seattle. And we had an amazing response. I think almost every single speaker we invited wanted to come. Um, but uh, COVID had other plans for us as it did for everyone else in the world. So, um, but we're really delighted to have converted this now to this virtual format and to have so many people able to participate. Um, and so um, the, the, let me quickly just say that in addition to the amazing speakers we have today, we actually have a whole series of amazing speakers drawn from that original meeting. And um, uh, let's see if Megan could put up the slides. I just wanna quickly tell you about the upcoming seminars. So these are approximately monthly, once per, I think exactly once per month. Um, and we're going to have each time uh, two speakers. So if we go to the next slide, uh, we're going to start off in December with Samantha Morris and Rahul Satija. Then in January, we'll have George Church and Magda Zernika Getz. In February, we'll have uh, Detlev Arendt and Siliana Juliano from Davis. And then in March, we'll have Ellen Rothenberg, my colleague here at Caltech, and Jan Huiskin. And in April, We'll have Sumin Lee and Dana Pear. I think we have one more. Yeah, and, and we'll have Christy Redhorse and Bob Watterson in May. And, um, and then we'll, oh, sorry. And finally in June, we're gonna have uh, Prisca Liverali and Chris Walsh. So I think if you, I think it's an amazing um, um, series that I hope uh, many or all of you will um, also attend as well. And we will be reaching out to you with more information uh, about how to register for those those seminars. Okay, so anyway, I just want to say that the, the incredible response we had to this meeting and to the original uh, um, non-virtual um, version of this, to me just says that um, there's a huge amount of excitement for the potential of, of what's now becoming possible. And I think we're really just at the beginning of, a, of an amazing adventure. And I just want to close by, by these comments by just thanking a number of people. So I just want to send a huge thank you to Kathy Richmond, to uh, Todd Peterson, Alan Jones, and all the other leadership of the Allen Institute, because I think they really had the vision to kind of nurture this very young field uh, right at the beginning and uh, be really supportive and visionary about that. And I also want to thank um, a lot of the, the other staff at the Allen Institute who have done an amazing job of organizing this meeting and publicizing it. Ashley Bachman, Megan Whiting, Casey Elkins, Jennifer Pulaski, and Nick Holly. And also to Tish Maskell and Joe Leonardo, who have helped also kind of organize this whole event and the speaker series that I just mentioned. None of this would be possible without them. So thank you. Thank you all very much.